Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen the, main the main event. event. Uh, let's, let's get ready, ready to rumble! Hey everybody, I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oral Reports. So... Tonight's episode is going to center on two famous monsters in cinema history. First, there's the eighth wonder of the world, King Kong. Created in 1933 by Edgar Wallace and Marion C. Cooper, this giant gorilla came from Skull Island, inhabited by unextinct dinosaurs, until he met a beautiful woman named Ann Darrow, gets captured by Carl Denham, gets taken to New York City, and meets his tragic demise by falling off the Empire State Building. Now, most of you who follow me may already know that I was introduced to King Kong by a Universal Studio Tour set back during the mid-1990s, which is sadly no longer there due to a fire. And over the course of my blog series, I've looked at King Kong-related films like Peter Jackson's version from 2005, which to me is an absolute masterpiece, and Kong Skull Island from 2017, which was a pretty interesting movie. Also, a while back, I did rent the 1933 film from Netflix, and while that film is a classic, I feel like some of the stop motion is kind of dated to today's standards. And of course, I saw a badly animated version of King Kong from 1998 on YouTube, which stars an inspirational actress whom I chatted with via GalaxyCon last year. By the way, Jodie Benson's 60th birthday was just recently on Sunday, October 10th, and if she's watching this video, I hope she had a wonderful day. And now let's move on to the terror from the land of the rising sun, Godzilla, a.k.a. Gojira. Created in 1954 by Tomoyuki Tanaka, Ishiro Honda, and Iji Tsuburaya, Godzilla is an enormous destructive prehistoric sea monster awakened and empowered by nuclear radiation. With the nuclear bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki and the Lucky Dragon 5 incident still fresh in the Japanese consciousness, Godzilla was conceived as a metaphor for nuclear weapons. Others have suggested that Godzilla is a metaphor for the United States, a giant beast woken from its slumber, which then takes terrible vengeance on Japan. Now, I must admit, I don't really consider myself a Godzilla fan, even though I did see his 2000 movie in theaters years ago, and over the years, I've been learning many different facts regarding the Big G. For example, some stories took on less serious undertones, portraying Godzilla as an anti-hero, or a lesser threat who defends humanity. And of course, one of my favorite CD-ROMs did parody Godzilla in a car version called Carzilla. And of course, later films addressed themes, including Japan's forgetfulness over its imperial past, natural disasters, and the human condition. Also, I heard that Godzilla was inspired by Ray Harryhausen's Heretosaurus from 1953's the Beast from 20,000 Fathoms. And for some time, thanks to my friend Jaime Toot's Top 11 Next Best Scares of Childhood, I might someday want to watch Godzilla's 1985 film along with his recent two films from the 2010s. Anyway, there once was a time back during the early 1960s where King Kong and Godzilla would cross paths and clash together on the big screen. But... The film I'll be blogging tonight will be Godzilla and King Kong's battle from seven months ago. So, let's get started. Released to HBO Max on March 31st, 2021, the movie is Godzilla vs. Kong. Now, on for the plot of the movie. Kong and his protectors undertake a perilous journey to find his true home. Along for the ride is Gia, an orphan girl who has a unique and powerful bond with the mighty beast. However, 
they soon find themselves in the path of an enraged Godzilla as he cuts a swath of destruction across the globe. The initial confrontation between the two titans, instigated by unseen forces, is only the beginning of the mystery that lies deep within the core of the planet. So, what do I think of this movie? Well, in my personal opinion, this film was very thrilling. And I kind of regret not watching it on HBO Max, but what am I going to do? Anyway, let's move on to Mustang Notes. Now, firstly, this is the fourth film in Legendary Pictures' MonsterVerse. The project was announced in October 2015 when Legendary Pictures declared plans for a shared cinematic universe between Godzilla and King Kong. The film's writer's room was assembled in March 2017, and Adam Wingard was announced as the director in May 2017. Principal photography began in November 2018 in Hawaii, Australia, and Hong Kong, and the filming wrapped up in April 2019. The visual effects for the film were created by moving picture company Scanline VFX and Weta Digital. Sadly, during the shooting, the crew faced several setbacks. A non-COVID-related viral outbreak that affected 40% of the crew and forced them out of commission for a week. The camera operator broke his foot on the third day of filming, and a spider bite forced Ben Saracen to seek hospital attention. After being delayed from a November 2020 release date due to COVID-19, Godzilla vs. Kong was theatrically released internationally on March 24, 2021, and in the United States on March 31st, where it was officially released on HBO Max simultaneously. After its release, the film broke several pandemic box office records and grossed over $467.8 million worldwide against a production budget between $155 to $200 million and a break-even point of $330 million, making it the fourth highest-grossing film of 2021. Plus, the film was also a streaming hit, becoming the most successful launch item in HBO Max's history. Now, what I like about this movie is the science, and while it may be a bit complicated for me to explain on my own, due to my autism and Asperger's Syndrome, I think it's still very interesting due to the Hollow Earth plot, which kind of gives me Journey to the Center of the Earth flashbacks. And I also like the opening credits scene, which shows clips from the past three films in the MonsterVerse. Plus, I kind of like that this film includes subtitles to translate American Sign Language, which kind of brings back memories not only from my ASL class in college, but also from the infamous Quiet Place films. Also, I find it pretty interesting that this film takes place in 2024, one year after the Endgame year. But by far, the best parts of the movie, in my opinion, are the scenes where Godzilla and King Kong clash, which, in my opinion, range from brutal to intense to epic and i think the final battle in hong kong where kong and godzilla fight mega godzilla is equally as amazing and now let's move on to the cast first let's start by talking about the two dueling monsters godzilla and king kong king kong motion captured by animation supervisor eric Petey, in my opinion is pretty similar but different compared to how he was in Kong Skull Island due to him being older and wiser. Plus, I think Kong displays even more noble traits as he notably protects little Gia and of course the other humans from numerous threats whenever they be fellow titans or humans. However, it is also shown that Kong can have a very vengeful side. As for Godzilla, who happens to be mo-capped by TJ Storm, in my opinion, 
He's a lot more ferocious compared to Kong, mainly due to him being an indestructible killing machine, and of course, I think his radioactive breath is both dangerous but cool at the same time. Also, Big G can be really aggressive and violent towards humans and titans alike if he is ever provoked, which is something that Madison Russell acknowledged as it was not his nature to wreak havoc upon human settlements without cause or reason. In the film, Godzilla wrecked havoc upon Apex Cybernex facilities upon sensing that its human occupants were hiding what he senses is an alpha that was challenging him, which Godzilla calls the Hidden One. And the main reason why Godzilla was fighting Kong is due to him interfering with his mission while Kong was trying to protect the people he cares for. And now on to the human cast. And as a heads up, I'll only talk about the ones who are interesting, to me anyway. Dr. Nathan Lind, Monarch's chief cartographer, is played by Alexander Skarsgård, whom I only remember from the 2012 Battleship movie. Dr. Lind is a geologist who is obsessed with Hollow Earth. His pursuit of his theories has relegated him to the status of crackpot in the scientific community, though it turns out that much of what he says is actually accurate. Though cowardly and unsure on the surface, Dr. Lin has great courage beneath the surface. Next is Dr. Eileen Andrews, played by Rebecca Hall, whom has been in the MCU's Iron Man 3 and Steven Spielberg's The BFG. Dr. Andrews is a dedicated scientist and linguist. Her pursuit of truth and knowledge is complemented by her nurturing nature as an adoptive mother to Gia. Having studied Kong for many years, Dr. Andrews has sought to learn everything she can about him. Plus, she is very cautious when it comes to new discoveries, and she despises those who would treat the secrets of the Earth as a simple, disposable resource. Next we have Maya Simmons, played by Isa Gonzalez, whom was in Alita Battle Angel and Spirit Untamed. Maya is said to be the second female villain in the MonsterVerse, first being Emma Russell in Godzilla King of Monsters. Anyway, in this movie, Maya is sent by her father Walter to deliver the heave transport to the expedition and watch over the venture and ensure its success. After retrieving the necessary information regarding the energy signature of the Hollow Earth's power source, she tried to abandon the rest of the expedition and escape to the surface, but made a huge mistake of ordering her pilot to fire on King Kong in order to make him move out of the way, which causes Kong to grab the heave when it tried to go through the Hollow Earth Tunnel, which Godzilla drilled through with his atomic breath. However, Kong casually crushed the heave and caused it to explode, killing Maya and everyone else inside the vehicle in the process. Finally, we have Gia, played by Kaylee Hoddle. Gia is a young orphan Iwi, whom was adopted by Dr. Eileen Andrews, and she has a kinship bond with King Kong. Now, I consider Gia as my favorite character in this movie, not just because of her deafness and her communication in sign language, but I think her bond with Kong is kind of similar to Nova's character in War for the Planet of the Apes. Other members of the cast include Millie Bobby Brown as Madison Russell, Julian Dennison as her friend Josh Valentine, Damian Bircher as Walter Simmons, Maya's father, and Brian Tyree Henry as Bernie Hayes. And now let's move on to my final words. Overall, Godzilla vs. Kong is a very thrilling monster movie. While the science is very complicated, and several of the human characters aren't that much interesting in my opinion, I think the story is very well written and executed, plus the cinematography is very well done, same goes for the visual effects, 
and the battles are really epic and intense. Also, after watching this movie on Blu-ray, it makes me want to re-watch the past King Kong and Godzilla movies from the 2010s, and maybe someday I should rent the original King Kong vs. Godzilla from the 1960s. So, if you folks are into either of these two legendary cinematic monsters, give this movie a watch. It's definitely a thrilling movie to watch, especially during the Halloween season. As for my rating, I'll give it a 91% out of 100. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to join me next time as we look at the latest Disney villain movie, which was, believe it or not, almost my return to the cinema. Mustang Power. Mustang <laughs> Power.